spread. Um, and, and calling all brothers to hold each other accountable and to support each other and, and lift each other up and challenge each other um, to, to continue that faith journey. So that's why we wanted to start with uh, breaking bread this afternoon. But we're getting ready to partake on a, uh, a, a conference that's going to change a lot of men's lives. And so I would encourage you to, to be bold, be brave, but be confident that in the preparation you've done over the last seven months, and in, in, a, in a lifetime of preparation for a lot of us, um, it's all going to come to pass this weekend. If you can make a difference in one man's life, it's more, more than worth it. And so we wanted to thank you for being here, all your hard work. Um, and I just want to remind the brothers that, that didn't make it the other night, just, just I want to repeat our mission statement one more time. Because uh, it really is so simple, but it tells the message of exactly uh, what this organization is about. Um, and I think individually, each man that I've come to know, um, this describes you perfectly. But it, uh, North Texas Catholic Brothers for Christ, motivating Catholic men to commit to building the body of Christ by uniting as brothers, living the gospel values in all areas of our lives, and facilitating faith-building programs in your community. That's what it's about, guys. We're going to have a conference this weekend. We're going to fire ourselves and a lot of people up. But remember, as I told you the other night, it's the day after that counts. It's in the preparation that we've done. It'll make a big difference. But it's the day after where we provide the support to these men to let them know that if they're willing to open their hearts and their minds and have the right attitude, the Holy Spirit can flood their souls and really change their life. That's the impact that you're getting ready to have this weekend. So I want to thank each and every one of you for everything that you've done in that. And before we eat, if, if, if we could, um, let's join hands together. And I've asked Father, Father Bill Casey if he would lead us in a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we prepare to begin this conference, we ask the Holy Spirit to open our minds to His truth, and open our hearts to His love, and our souls to the actions of His grace. And we pray the spiritual fruits of this conference will be lasting and always growing the lives of those who participate. And we pray together. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive. By thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. What this conference means to me is, uh, you know, I used to be the guy that just came to Mass every Sunday and uh, left my faith at the door when I, when I walked out and I thought I had everything under control um, and uh, realized that I didn't. You know, I tried to go it alone and failed miserably. Um, but it's through, you know, from being buns up at ground zero, I'll, I'll call it, um, maybe realize that I need my brothers to, to help me get by. And, I, and uh, you know, that's my selfish reason for this. But I'd like to spread that out to the other men that come to this conference to, to, so they'll know that we got their back. We're there for them. Uh, they're not in it alone. And, uh, and that's it. That's what it's all about for me. So hours a day. I'm also the president and CEO of Ave Maria Communications and we're responsible for producing <coughs> Catholic Connection with Teresa Tamio and the doctor is in with Ray and uh, Colleen and More to Life with Greg and Lisa Popcheck and Father Ricardo. So we're involved really as a program production uh, uh, ministry. We do own and operate three stations as well in Michigan and Southwest Florida. So we kind of have both sides going at the same time, where, which is actually very good for us. It helps us determine what we're going to be producing because we have a direct relationship with our, uh, you know, our local uh, communities. But uh, I'm so happy to be here and to hear what you're saying about working together. That I, there is nothing more important in my estimation at this moment in American Catholicism than for men like yourself who are engaged in the faith to figure out how to help those Catholic men who are disengaged experience the grace of God. And it's, it's, there's no easy way to do that. I mean, it's got to be done through relationships. But I'll be talking about that tomorrow, and I'm just so happy 
to be part of this whole experience. So, thank you. I'm with you. <laughs> uh, I'm the executive producer and news director for Al's program, and uh, with a staff of 12 at Ave Maria Radio, producing over 50 hours of content each week, we all have about a dozen hats, so 95% um, of people know me for the fascinating fact. Yes, I was going to ask for this. Which takes about five seconds out of every day, and uh, that's what I'm best known for. So, um, yeah, I'm just really happy to uh, see, I was blown away when I walked in and saw <laughs> this number of men in the room, and uh, we've been talking over lunch about how um, this is a real demonstration of uh, intense leadership in uh, men's movements, and we have a lot of people in Ann Arbor we know that are um, national leaders of men's movements and uh, trying to get these conferences off the ground, and it's amazing how much we hear about, you know, it started out last year, three years ago at 50 men, and then 500 men, and then 5,000, it's, it's just incredible how it's growing, uh, so kudos to your work. I'm Father Bill Casey, and uh, I should tell you first that uh, um, my hometown is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Sorry, uh, and I'm a <laughs> lifelong uh, Eagles fan. Uh, uh, <laughs> now, in case you don't know Tim, being from out of town, uh, uh, there is a great brotherhood, a great fraternity between the Cowboys and the Eagles over the years. I'm a Redskins fan. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm a father of mercy, and uh, the apostle of the fathers of mercy is to preach parish missions and retreats and traditional Catholic devotions of all kinds. So uh, we are an order of traveling preachers. In fact, I just finished a mission uh, down in West Texas, the town where the, uh, the explosion took place uh, about this time. But um, I have spoken at many of these men's conferences, and um, you know it is great to see these men's conferences bringing up around the country in so many different places. And to me, it's an indication that maybe, just maybe, the guys are starting to get off the fence and get into the fray. Yeah. Fellas, we need the work that you do. This is vitally important to the future of the church in this country, because I'll tell you what, in my opinion, from what I can see traveling around the country, Time is not on our side in all this. Mm -hmm. Believe me, you know, Pope Francis right now is calling on us not just to be disciples of Christ, but to truly be what he calls evangelizing disciples, right? Actively engaged in the work of evangelization. That's what you're doing here. So I, I thank God for the work that you do and for the ability to participate in this. You know, the church teaches that uh, an event like this is truly a graced event. Uh, that is to say, it's an event where the Holy Spirit will be at work in a special way in, in the minds, the hearts, and the souls of those who participate in good faith. And I always say this, if an event like this helps just one person, right, if it strengthens the faith of just one person, if it brings just one soul closer to Christ, if it brings about just one good confession, if it brings one back to the sacraments, it's a success for the sake of that one, right? It's the infinite value of a single soul in the sight of Almighty God, so we uh, we pray for its success. And I thank you for the invitation. Bakula, I'm also with Prince of Peace and have been there about 10 years. Um, why I'm here is um, be careful what you pray for. So uh, it was a Discipleship Sunday, and I had been involved in many ministries, but I, um, I sought out some opportunities to be more involved in men's ministry in particular and to be in the company of Band of Brothers that, uh, who I'm often with on Saturday morning for Rosary and for Men's Fellowship. And that led me to Christ in Jesus Parish, uh, to be in many roles, um, to receive the gift of CHIRP, uh, to help put it on as, as, as one of the spiritual directors, uh, to help other teams. And, and, and what I gained most from CHIRP was I got to hear now 70, 80 different uh, witnesses from men from all aspects of life. You know, a man who hadn't been to reconciliation in 39 years, um, some men who were still in mourning over the loss of a child. And I think all of that really taught me about, um, you know, we're, we're, we all have our challenges, we all have our struggles, we all have our uh, sins to overcome. So I've, I've become a stronger Christian from that, from hearing 
other men's stories, from sharing my story with other men. Uh, so I've been involved in this uh, organization now for three years in a marketing promotion capacity. Um, the last two years have shifted even more in this digital era to social media. And so what I've had the unique opportunity to see is by managing our Facebook site and Twitter account is hearing people uh, talking about uh, how excited they are to see Doug, uh, how they've heard you on the radio, and they're like, wow, I finally get the chance to meet this guy. Uh, same thing for Al, and they're like, I've heard all about Father Bill, and so they're coming to hear, hear you guys. Um, they're also coming to be part of something, what I read between the lines with some of their tweets and some of their posts to Facebook, is they're coming to be part of something bigger. And so uh, I, I view myself as this really tiny part of helping to make this something bigger. Um, but what I'm really jazzed about is, is this enthusiasm that I see for men who are, are not afraid of uh, sharing their faith. And that's something that I remember from when the Crossing the Goal team was here two years ago, when Peter Herbert said, um, how many of your coworkers know you're Catholic? That hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, well, fortunately, a lot do. But 10 years ago, people probably didn't even know I was a Christian, right? So, you know, whether it's a crucifix in my office or other crosses that my kids make with little yarn and stuff, uh, I, I, I think it's really cool that there's an opportunity in corporate America for us to <coughs> talk faith so that we're not just talking about it in church, but as Father Tom, for those of you who, who know Father Tom, well, he'll say, out there. Um, the out there is how we use our faith to profess it. Uh, to build up the body of Christ outside of the confines of, of the parish. And that's one of the beauties, uh, the graces that I've received from hearing Father Jim, Father Tom, and certainly Father Marco in the last few years. So I think we'll see, ex we'll experience that this, uh, this uh, tonight, uh, tomorrow. Um, it's just a great opportunity. And, and, and the mission statement that Paul read is just right on the button. Um, so if, if we can touch one person as we're starting to hear that theme, you know, that's great, and I think, Ralph, it was just the other night, you talked about make, make two new best friends, two male best friends, um, and, 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 and grow from them and have them grow in us. So it's, it's just a grace and a blessing to be part of this group, and I uh, look forward to the life-changing things that we'll see happen in the next 24 hours. Hey, Sherry, I'm helping a little bit with some of the legal stuff, and I helped line up some priests for confessions for this conference. Um, I go to St. Rita, and I've been going there for probably about the last 10 or 11 years, and I'm slowly going to some other parishes because I moved not long ago. But uh, I got involved with this because, because I, I realized around the time the scandals broke out that you know, there really needs to be more men involved in their in their in, in their faith. I mean, we go to mass, and you look around a church, you, you look around a, a you look around a congregation, and you know, most of the ministries are run by women. And and it's like, how, how come the men aren't, aren't aren't stepping up? And a conference like this, and and I really you you, you mostly most people notice now, like around the country, in part. And in response to the scandals, more kept, more men seem to be taking more of an interest in their faith. But and, and that, that that that's good, and that needs to continue. Mm -hmm. And uh, a conference like this, I think, is a good way to address that. Plus, there's a lot of men out there. Like, I mean, I look around this room, and several of us grew up in the '70s and the '80s, where we where all we heard from the pulpit was stuff like "life is all peaches and cream," or or yeah, whatever. You know, we didn't really get the the the, the nuts and bolts, and that that. That, that, that's part of why a lot of people. That's part of why a lot of people. That, that's part of why a lot of people from our generation left left, left the faith after they graduated high school, because they never really learned it. And I think this is a good way to, to a conference like this is a good way to address that and to help yeah, and to help um, help bring back some of the some of some of the nuts and bolts and and so so some men that, that come to the conference they may be well, yeah I, I go to mass with my wife and. And that's it. And it's a way for them to say, "Hey, I need to get more involved here, and I need to learn. I need to learn too." So yeah, that's part of why I got involved with this. Mark Haggard, and um, 
this is my third year in being involved. Um, first year, um, these guys kind of know my story, so I won't, won't bore, bore you guys too much with it. But uh, first year, uh, basically, I got tapped on the shoulder by, uh, by Joey. Knowing Joey is, uh, is, is a great blessing, you guys. Uh, you, you talk about leadership, it, it start, started with this man, at least for me. Um, I moved here in, in uh, uh, 2011, and um, I went to San Gabriel and, and got a chance to meet Joey, and, and he got me involved in this uh, the first year. And uh, so I was part of, part of the program team, and then uh, last year I was in the band, uh, played the music, and then, uh, then this year I was just going to stay on the sideline and not, not worry about it. And, uh, I just just participate and then the finance lead and uh, have to thank uh, Chet Wheelis was the one that kind of individual reach out. He came out to me and asked me to. Uh, he found out I was in finance and accounting and asked me to, to do that. So it's the second year, first year as a volunteer. Uh, again, you've got a you got a street going here. I'm from Prince of Peace. That's my home parish. Uh, proud member of that, that community. And uh, I would just have to say, the third year, I'm really looking forward to the conference. But I'd have to say that associating with the men in this room, for the speakers. It, these men are a wonderful men. It's made me. It's made me a better man. I appreciate <coughs> appreciate the association of all you guys. Mark, uh, I'm in charge of the uh, provisions this year, and I was also taking care of the volunteers for this year, for the first time. And last year I was the IT lead, lead team, so it's kind of a switch for me from IT to provisions, and I enjoy my role to right, especially <coughs> working with the volunteers this year. And I've been here for the, this is my third year with the conference and. Uh, my real goal is to get closer to God after my, you know, uh, some sad things in my life, you know, this is like an opening for me, you know, to be able to get closer to God and focus more on what's important in life, you know, so that's my goal. And I've been happy to deal with this man here, day in there, now, I know what will I do with my Tuesday nights now, that will be over soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big hole, okay? <laughs> the same thing with my JYM every Wednesday, be ending also next week. RCIA. RCIA. <laughs> But uh, I enjoyed working here and hopefully I'll be back next year. Someone to roll. I'm Larry West. I'm the co lead, I guess, with the outreach. So I'm trying to get uh, people coming here and I'm also working with fellowship. So I'm leading with fellowship and what that means to me is uh, the way that I got involved in this is several years ago. Uh, my previous parish of St. Elizabeth Van Seaton's started with about five or six guys on Saturday morning and turned into 30 or 40. I changed parishes because I was a youth minister and started at Good Shepherd, where I'm from now. And we've got about 50 or 60 guys coming each Saturday morning praying the rosary and, um, and then uh, sharing faith stories in the morning and eating donuts and coffee. So we call it R&D, rosary and donuts. And, uh, Can I come to uh, Yes. Yeah, so we have a special <laughs> apple fritter uh, saved for you. Uh, we'd love for you to come. Uh, the theme Iron Sharpens Iron is one of the things that keeps hitting me and as I go through this and this weekend what I'm looking for is, is to help people after the conference uh, it's not about me sharpening them it's not about me wanting them to be sharpened it's about getting men to realize to have a desire to be sharpened if that makes sense what I want is to have people realize I really because that's the way I feel about it when I come to these conferences I really need to be sharpened and it's painful at times but we all as men need people that hold men, other men, to hold us accountable. And that's why, you know, it's, I feel, almost feel sometimes like it's selfish. I want to be around this group for that reason. I, I know what you guys do for me, so I appreciate that. I'm Rick. Um, I'm on the outreach team and the provisions with Mark. And, uh, you know, I, I got started in this organization last year after going to the conference last year. It was unbelievable last year. And, uh, and afterwards, you know, they sent out a note saying, does anybody want to help with this conference last year? So I thought, you know, I need to step up my discipleship a little bit. And this did it. I mean, this is a great group of guys. Uh, Kevin, Joey, you guys have a great organization going, and, and we're glad to be part of it. You know, we're driving 30 minutes to come over every Tuesday night to do that, and we're, well, we feel privileged to do that. Also, I'm one of those R&D guys that, 60 guys every Saturday morning at 7. I uh, can't be prouder than that. I mean, we, it, it's, it's just a great uh, great thing that we do. So, thanks for, for having us here. Hey guys, Joey. I'm at St. Gabriel's Catholic Church and uh, was, of course, the leader for this group from the first year. Uh, I won't bore you guys with the story on how I got that first leadership position. I want to share some other things. Um, saying that, that no learn how to say no. My wife tells me that all the time. But when he tells me to say yes, I answer him. Amen. I'm 
so glad you guys are here. I welcome you speakers. We're going to have a great event this weekend, and I'm just doing his work. Thank you. I'm Doug Berry, and I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm not a member of Prince of Peace Parish. <laughs> <laughs> the only prison situation is where because Tim got me in trouble. That's why he had to bail me out. No, I've um, uh, been traveling for about 22, 23 years now. Um, many conferences over the years with Father Casey and Tim, and this is always an honor to come together and be part of a conference in general, uh, especially for Catholic speakers because we're hanging out with each other. We see each other periodically around the country, and then you talk to each other now and then. I remember Father Casey said something a while back. We are in Texas again. It was like 10, 15 years ago, a Full Muscle Truth Conference. And you said, um, Doug, I wonder if, you know, in the years to come, if anybody else is going to pick up this mantle and keep doing this because things are getting harder and more challenging in our future. And I agree also with Tim with, you know, my 22, 23 years of speaking. In the last five years, I've done more work with men's conferences and men's parish events um, in the last five years than all the years before combined. There was something happening, definitely something happening. And I think it's because the line's being drawn more clearly. I think we're all kind of saying that. We're all seeing that from what Tim said about the administration. You know, in Father Casey's talks, you can't listen to Father Casey anywhere on radio or TV without hearing something about you know, things such as the rosary being a 50 caliber machine gun with 50 rounds in it, and things like that, which I love, you know. Um, thus the camel pants. Yeah, you, know, so just, um, you know, at the turn of the century, the Pope wrote, and not this last turn of the century, but the previous one, 1990, 1890 or 1891, Christians as citizens. Leo XIII said, Christian life is a warfare, right? And when we run from the enemy, we turn our backs, I'm paraphrasing what he said, we turn our backs and run from the enemy. We not only insult God, we embolden the wicked. And that was over a hundred years ago that he said that. He's also the, the Pope that wrote extensively on Freemasonry and really warned us of the things to come. And he's also the one that gave us St. Michael the Archangel Prayer. We are in battle. It is a war and it is for souls. And the alternative of not ending up in heaven is ending up in hell. And we do need to realize the seriousness of these consequences. And that's what drives me and has driven me for all these years is to get out and, and really bring this message because by the grace of God, you know, as you're all saying, and I feel the same thing, I felt like God years ago said, you're going to do this? I felt like it was a kick to the ribs, you know, it wasn't gentle. It was a blessed mother who hit me with the head of the two by four when I read about Fatima and found out that uh, she came and warned us in 1917, if you do not stop offending my son, there'll be a second war. We have World War II. Now, if you look at the you know recent gener recent decades here, you're going to find where several apparitions have been approved of the church were the devotion. Rwanda, for example, she showed them. They just recently we we remembered the 20th anniversary of the genocide. Okay, which she warned the children of 20 or 12 years before it happened. Right? She said, "This is what happens when man turns from God. Evil things happen. Bad things happen. We're seeing it in our time." So, as Tim said, it's our time to rise up and be saints. To raise up, to let God raise us up and be saints. To wake up and be saints to be heroes, to be fighters, to be warriors. And it starts with that heart. Where's the heart at? And I'll just close with this thought. You know, it, it, it's, 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 to me, it's one of my favorite parts of scriptures is when is in Matthew, Peter in the boat, and they see Jesus, and they think it's a ghost, and Peter, of course, with his you know, classy way of approaching things, no, it's the Lord. And you only imagine these, you, know, you can't get 12 guys in a boat together and have them all agree on anything, right? So you can only imagine what the conversation may have been like when Peter said that. You know, oh, here he goes again, you know, and... You know, he's shooting off his mouth again. And, and then he says to the Lord, he challenges Jesus. He says, if that is you, command me in humility, knowing that he has to be commanded to come to you. And what's Jesus say? One word. Come. Get out of the boat. Trust. Get on that water. And when he sinks, we don't know how long he was on the water, but when he sinks and our Lord grabs him, because he does the right thing, he cries out, Lord, save me. He grabs him. And the guys in the boat could have easily been saying, look, he did it. This is great. We can build on this. And that's kind of sometimes I think what we do as Christians, even in men conferences, you know, we, we say, you know, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. And I want to say, yeah, this is great. But guys, what does our Lord say to Peter when he's sinking? He grabs me and says, why did you doubt me? You little faith. You know, let's go further, guys. I don't think Jesus wants us walking on water. I think he wants us running on it, doing backflips on it, you know, spinning back kicks. You know, let's get into that battle on the water. With that kind of faith and trust. You know, this is your third year. You're looking at 700 plus guys. Next year, 1,700. The next year, 2,700. Why? Because as the line keeps getting laid down clear in our society, we need to be the men to stand up and respond and say, oh yeah, bring it. Because we got, we're packing a rosary, wearing a scapular, we got our holy water, we're hanging out with priests, we got all we need 
and we're ready for the battle. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be with you guys. I appreciate it. It's good to see some old friends too. So God bless you. I'm, I'm Chet Wheelis. I've been a legal lead for each of the, each of the three conferences. I haven't been able to be as involved from a time standpoint this year as I was the first two. And I've missed it. The thing that's exciting to me today is, is thinking back to that first year, this, this team was made almost entirely up of men from St. Gabriel and from Prince of Peace. This year, I don't know how, how many parishes we have, but, but you know, it's great to see people coming from all over North Texas to be involved in the leadership of this group. Uh, the, the, the future is, is just unlimited as, as that continues to grow. Uh, I, I don't know what size shoe Paul wears, but, but he had some big sh shoes to fill following Joey and Kevin, and he's done an outstanding job from, from what I've seen from Kyle of Florida this year. I appreciate that. For these other men. And, and the problem is, is they won't tell you. <clears throat> you've got to find it. Okay, you've got to find it. You've got to be present there. And I, I know my, myself personally, with all the, the, the wounds that I was dealing with, there was no way I could be present <clears throat> with another man. Okay, but, uh, but with, through his grace and through a lot of other things that I've been able to deal with and, and dealing with you, know, you, you men here, um, I've been able to, to be more present. Okay, and obviously we're all still a, a, a work in progress. But, uh, but being present, Letting that man express his issue to you, um, he sharpens me, I sharpen him, and uh, and we're able to to move move through life. I don't judge him; he doesn't judge me. Okay, that's the other that's the other big challenge. Frankly, that's part of been my, my problem as well. We were discussing earlier uh, uh, the biggest journey for me, especially because I'm an analytical guy, is about 16 inches from here to here, and it's just it's getting in into this heart. Okay, and that's really where it's got to come from. It's, it's that love, that love aspect. And again, there's a lot of love in this room, and I'm expecting a ton of love this weekend. And uh, it's just, it's just all great. So, so anyway, uh, again, I thank everybody for being here and look forward to the conference. Uh, Robert Smolin. I just happen to be in the job because uh, I like Excel spreadsheets and pivot tables. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of that, I enjoy, I enjoy uh, the faith of being a Catholic more now than I ever did before, probably over the last four years. Um, I think uh, uh, so many things in life had, had caused me to uh, stay in the Catholic faith, right? Besides uh, mom and dad always telling me that there is nothing else, but I didn't believe it until really four years ago uh, when life just kind of shattered. And then ever since then, the fire is lit to, for me personally in everything I do, whether it's my men's Bible study on a Saturday and figuring out is there another one on a Thursday night, and then coming and joining this team as well. Uh, but even hitting the road uh, in my normal job uh, and talking to people that are in other places and just interesting stories. So being Catholic for me is more than just a religion to follow, but it's something that I do end up uh, living and breathing by every single day. And this is just another re-energizing myself into every single day and to listening to the speakers, to listening to other gentlemen as well every day helps me personally excite myself to excite other people. So anyway, so... Head registration was the point, and Excel spreadsheets. That's about it. My name is Tim Staples. I'm the director of Apologetics and Evangelization for Catholic Answers. I'm basically here because I'm a Doug Berry groupie. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, need, no. you need a lifetime. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. I, Doug and I go back a long way. I, I bailed him out of jail a couple of times. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. But I, I would sort of re-echo what what Father said. I've been at this now for about 22 years, speaking, traveling and speaking. Even in my last two years, when, when I was in formation for the priesthood, I was traveling during my breaks and such and speaking. And for the last 20 years, I've been full-time as an apologist and doing a I've probably been traveling more than a human being ought to. But there's one thing that is exciting to me among many but I, I remember you know father when I first started this 20 years ago there wasn't a whole lot of men's conferences to speak of I mean they were rare birds and I was always excited to go and speak at a men's conference because I you know you should know gentlemen that 
you know, I look at it as the women are the, the sources of civilization, right? Uh, without the feminine, without the women, and ultimately our Blessed Mother in our lives, I mean, you and I are running around throwing spears at each other, you know? <laughs> women are the keepers of civilization, but the church, a culture, a family is only as strong as its men. And I believe, I was telling the guys earlier, in the last eight conferences I've done, six of them have been men's conferences, just here recently. And I'm seeing extraordinary things happen. And, and I have to believe that's part and parcel of what God is doing right now when we are living in a time where the empire is not only crumbling, but it's pretty much crumbled. This administration has seen to that just in the last five years. Who would have thought how precipitous would have been our, our, our decline, and yet here we are. The empire is crumbling, and yet, at the same time, and we can go back over history, guys, and we all know this is true, it's in the darkest moments in history that God raises up the greatest men. The fourth century, probably the darkest time in 2,000 years gives rise to St. Epiphanius, St. Augustine, St. Jerome, St. Hilary, St. Athanasius, and the, the list goes on. And I believe God is looking for a few good men right now, and God is raising them up. And it's, it's right here, as Father Casey said. It's in events like this that you really see men stepping up to the fore and starting to, to take the challenge, you know, we're being challenged now. We've got an administration in Washington, forgive me for picking on Obama because it's so easy. But, but we have, seriously, an, an, an administration that's basically pointing their finger right in, in your face, sir, in your face, and saying, do you think we care about what you believe? <laughs> Are you kidding me? They're saying, you're going to pay for abortion. You're going to pay for contraception. You're going to pay, pay for sterilization, whether you like it or not. And I do believe, as some of the guys have said earlier, that there are some men that are catching fire. The proof's in the pudding. I think these men confer the men's conferences are an example of that, and I think this is an example of that. So, gentlemen, I believe you and I are being called to stand up in this day, at this time, and act like men, because we haven't been for the last 50 or 60 years, and that's why we're in this mess. But I am so encouraged to be here, guys. I, I got the Holy Ghost goosebumps right now to prove it, because when I see you guys and, the conver and hear the conversations that we've been having, I know I get a shot in the arm. I can't wait to get out there tomorrow. The problem's going to be 35 minutes. <laughs> How are we going to do this, man? 35 minutes. You can do the open jokes in 35 minutes. That's right. I can't introduce myself in 35 minutes. But anyway. We do that much got an answer session already. That's right. Well, I mean, no, we're, we were just joke, joking about it. Actually, when you only have 35 minutes, you really got to... It takes a lot more time for me to prepare for 35 minutes than it does for an hour. Because I, I've got to be very concise and that's what we need to be. But the point is, gentlemen, this is an exciting time. Let's pray. Let's pray tonight and, and trust God because tomorrow we pray that each person that's there is going to hear from the Holy Spirit what he needs to hear to be transformed so that we can go out from this place and really make a difference. God bless you guys. Amen. I'm Craig Malone from St. Gabriel's and I'm a native Texan and a cowboy fan. So I can let you know that. <laughs> I'm a single dad with three kids and I've been out there alone. And uh, I finally realized that I needed to come and it wasn't wise to be out there alone. So uh, this was one of a series of steps I keep taking towards God um, to come to the men's conference last year. I was blown away. I was on fire coming out of that conference. And I just walked out going, wow, I wish my best friends were here from church. A, couple, you know, a lot of them were there, but I was still missing a few. Um, they're coming this year. Uh, for me, I've been spending most of my time uh, at church building the youth ministry with kids. And the men's conference after coming out is, is a, a step for me. I'm now um, um, evangelizing. I feel more like a disciple, and I'm now becoming a fisher of men as well as uh, the children. So um, I'm keeping taking, I've taken many steps afterwards and, and just keep taking those steps. And we're already excited about, you know, one year later, I'm still excited about this conference. But now we're getting pumped up and excited about, okay, how are we going to go about next year as we were talking? and reach churches and get even more more out here.
So, anyhow, thank you. My name is uh, Art Yongsan, originally from the Philippines, not related to Manny Pacquiao. Our wish is wits. Anyway, uh, I live in Chicago for 22 years. <clears throat> then I moved here last year. I was ordained as the deacon in the Diocese of Joliet. <clears throat> then uh, last year, I attended the first men's conference here in Texas, and I said, I want to be part of that uh, group of men. Well, <clears throat> as a deacon, I'm sure you observed that the, the last part of the Mass, we do the send for. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord, or the Mass is ended. And that's really our role. And just like you guys, that's where the action is. That's why I want to be part of this <coughs> conference like this, to really have my ear on the ground, what's going on. Uh, the issue of whether especially on pornography, how to deal with all these things, the number one cause of the breakdown of the family, especially now when their family is at risk with so many things going on. Well, I signed up for the outreach uh, ministry here as, as a team, but <clears throat> lo and behold, a couple of days, the host pastor is not available for exposition. My pastor is not also available for the uh, benediction. So I'm assigned to do the uh, <clears throat> exposition and adoration, which is near and dear to my heart. I really love it. I love doing the holy hour. That's why Father Larry said, when you're exposed to the Blessed Sacrament, that's where you have that santan. That's why you see, can see my color here. <laughs> <laughs> exposed to the Blessed Sacrament. But this is the thing I'd like to throw out to the team, especially when we do the exposition, I want as much as many people in red shirt to be in front. Paul talked about being bold. Let's be there in the front. Guys on our knees, very few men have seen fellow men praying on their knees. So let's be bold on this part. And a lot of them have not even experienced exposition. Why are these guys so excited about this uh, exposition? Let's show them this is very important, the Blessed Sacrament. Now, there's no doubt all the national speakers will give a great message on this. But one thing I really emphasize, I want that these participants will hear the message of Christ to the Blessed Sacrament, the message of mercy, love, and forgiveness. And I end with this. It is our awareness that refreshes all others. Thank you. I am uh, Herman Dumbrigge. I'm from the Philippines originally. Um, in the Philippines, I, I went to a judge's school for 10 years. And then after that, I did go back to confession for about 20 years. About five years ago, I went back to confession. I guess slowly. Um, I, I, I've come back to the, to the faith, joined CHIRP, um, I, I joined the men's conference last year as a volunteer and decided to be part of the team this year and it, it's been a blessing. Um, this morning uh, we were at the This Man Is You breakfast program at St. Mark, which is my parish, and we heard uh, Father Bill Casey, they had a video of you with, you, with your homily about um, the sick man who was brought down to Jesus from the roof about friendship and that's what I like most about this is being in the company of the men who who want to bless others and I'm Herman. I'm Paul Mahoney from uh, Good Shepherd Catholic Community in Tarrant County uh, or otherwise known as Fort Worth. Um, i tell you the reason I'm here is about, about four years ago I was sitting in mass and I just Something was tugging on me, and I told my wife afterwards, I said, I'm, I'm being called to do more. And I was doing a few service ministries at the time, but I just said, hey, there's something else out there. And, and I mean, not even a week later, I had the opportunity to go through Christ Renews and Spirit Retreat. And I never had any idea of the love and the compassion that my brothers could share and bring the Holy Spirit to me. I'd had no relationship with Christ like that. So it changed me, and, and and what that allowed me to do is, is I met a whole network of brothers who, you know, serve each other, hold each other accountable, lift each other up, <coughs> and can pray for each other. And it has just set my faith on fire. Uh, now I don't feel like I'm called to serve. I feel like I want to serve, and it, it's just it's just such a change for me in my life. And um, why I'm here at the conference is um, after the first year we had just missed it we had heard about it and one of the brothers came back to our parish and he said hey this is something else. and so a group of us checked into it the next year which was last year we came and we experienced more of the grace and the compassion and the love of Christ and we said well, we've got to be part of this 
And so we disarmed and said, hey, we're willing to help in any way that we need. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a humble responsibility, but, you know, I was called on to be the team lead this year. And it's, uh, it's, it's just something that, uh, it, it is a truly humbling experience. I'm glad that, that, that Christ called me. And it's very funny. I was walking in to prepare for my reading um, on Easter Sunday. And one of my brothers said, hey, you know, how's it going? And I gave him the quick update on Catholic Brothers for Christ, where we stand. And he said, he said to me, and this is a gentleman I respect, but he said to me, when are you ever going to learn to say no? And I immediately just turned. I said, brother, I think the Holy Spirit was looking for a yes. And so that, that, that's my attitude. <laughs> Why is Holy praying for that yes, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so he answered my prayer. Absolutely. <laughs> So that's why I'm here. And I want to send a special thanks to Joey and to Kevin. You got us started, brother. You took us to another level. And to, to have you guys and your leadership and your abilities on this team being a witness to all the brothers that are here and showing your church communities what we can get started, uh, I want to all of us to thank you for what I'm John Robe. I am from Prince of Peace as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why I'm here is because one morning, after Friday morning, um, Kevin walked up to me and said, hey, we kind of need somebody, a coordinator MC for the Saturday morning group, would you? And I immediately thought of, to your story, which was you felt the Holy Spirit tugging on you to get involved with more. My wife is tugging on me to get involved with less. So I made a commitment to myself that I was going to say no, but I couldn't say no to Kevin because I truly love, I, 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 just, I do a lot of speaking professionally, and I do some speaking spiritually, and I, I love it. So he had me at, hey, John, <laughs> I'm here. Now I'm really scared because I'm sitting next to Nick Toms who's telling me it's really hard to play host. <laughs> you speak. It's impossible, I'm telling you. Now I'm scared. I just hope I get out of God's way. And, and just to you know, make sure that the Holy Spirit runs this and I'm just that instrument. So, turn it. I'm Michael Rourke. Um, you speakers are my heroes. These guys are my heroes. Um, any of y'all like uh, Hogan Heroes? Raise your hand. Viva la resistance. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm in there with uh, in Stalag 13, and we got a little a little thing going on here where we're resisting the enemy, and that's what we're doing, brothers. You know, we're uh, we're resisting the enemy. Viva Pisore. Um, you know, because this culture, like y'all were saying, has become from being annoyed to being downright hostile with folks like us, and so I'm ready to step up, and um, I'm ready to uh, be sharpened and and to sharpen my brothers, and uh, to keep it going. Thank you. I'm Pat Sapinoso, and I'm with Prince of Peace, Paris, and I was reading much of Kevin's book, which uh, dealt with friends, and, and they said something like, it said something like, friends, are, they challenge you. They're not, not the ones that, that support you, but one that gives you challenges in order for for you to be the best person of yourself, to be holy, to be holy, right? And I found one in Kevin, and I am trying to help bring about this this, this conference to to some successful endeavor. Thank you. My name is Ralph Saransky and I'm from uh, Good Shepherd Catholic Church and uh, the reason why I'm here is because of uh, Rick Self and Paul and Larry. We're all Chirp Brothers. Uh, Rick was the lay director for Chirp 5 and Larry was part of the uh, Chirp 5 also. We took Chirp 6 men through and uh, Rick is a faithful prayer warrior. He comes and prays with me at the abortion clinic every Monday and I've been out at the abortion clinic uh, six days a week for a couple of years and men of Good Shepherd have come and prayed with me and 
now we have, rather than just one isolated witness, we have these two or three brothers and sisters there praying at the abortion clinic, and they come from St. Michael's and Good Shepherd, and so when Rick asked me if I would uh, get involved in this event to help take men to a higher level, um, I could not refuse because he's such a blessed brother and is such a servant of God, and so I showed up at the meeting, and uh, I really wasn't going to do much of anything, and uh, of course there was one position open, and it was the promotional lead, and so God said, okay, Ralph, I want you to do that. And so I've spent uh, the last 20 years working on the internet and doing internet marketing, and I'm on the cutting edge of getting all the information about Catholics and businesses out on the internet, and it's high time that we brought our message out to the internet and out to the world using all the free resources that are available. So I've created a website for Catholic Brothers for Christ, I've created a website for Knights of Columbus, get them both out of the dark ages and now I'm working to help promote men and what we believe is Catholics to the world and to get Catholics to basically buy Catholic first. Become brothers not only through our Lord Jesus Christ and fellowship at church but also support each of our businesses so that we can be more successful and we can take that money that we get and tie it to the church to fulfill the mission that Pope Francis has given us.